that I yield back. Thank you very much. Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy, is uh, recognized for any questions he may have. Thank the chairman. Um, uh, there's some debate, as was raised earlier by the ranking member, about the equal divide on the, on the raising the age issue. Um, the uh, question I have for y'all as the committee experts on it is whether or not there's a debate about whether there is, in fact, a shortage of pilots or not. There seems to be, by my study and review, a significant shortage impacting the current uh, state of, of um, affairs and also looking ahead into the future. And I wondered if the chairman and the ranking member could comment on that. I believe there's an absolute shortage. I mean, um, Alpa would tell you there's not, but it's in their best interest to say right. there is. But having said that, um, there's an absolute shortage of pilots, and we're seeing it. We see it every day. What happened as a result of COVID was many pilots decided to take early retirement, and they did. And they're not coming back now, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. Um, and so we have a process to, you know, a pipeline. Well, that pipeline for getting new pilots in is severely stressed right now. And what's happening is, more than anything else, is the big airlines are pulling all of the regional um, pilots up. And now the regionals are completely out of luck. Um, they're going to have to, you know, they got to go back to, to, the, uh, to the beginning. I always make a joke of it, but I know when there's a pilot shortage, because the airlines start sending out um, blanket letters to anybody that's an airline transport rated pilot, come work for us. When I start getting those letters in the mail, I know there's a pilot shortage. Um, when they're saying, come work for us, and this is what we'll pay, and this is what we'll offer you for you know, a signing bonus uh, to do that, then I can guarantee you there's a pilot shortage if they're reaching so far down in as to pull you know, an ATP like myself up. Um, then, uh, then there's a problem. Right, uh, Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Representative. Um, yeah, uh, we need more pilots. We need more pilots in this going through the system. We need more pilots uh, in the system right now. So the bill in the Aviation Workforce Development uh, Program uh, actually uh, triples the amount of dollars available for the overall program, and a, and a third of that is for uh, pilot training. So we're making the investment there. There's amendments that I believe we've uh, either agreed to in a manager's amendment or certainly um, we worked on after the hearing or after the markup uh, to work uh, to um, better u utilize veterans uh, and bring them into the um, uh, into the pilot supply, and then um, there's the, um, the, the there's the uh, oh then yeah then individual airlines themselves are either partnering or have started academies to uh, train a new pipeline an additional pipeline of uh, pilots for the future. Um, so there's there's, all, there's a lot of things going on. You mentioned uh, the debate on the age, so I, would, I just would make a note on that, is that um, I do think that, uh, again, the U.S. has followed the International Civil Aviation Authority or organization, ICAO. When ICAO increased the age from 60 to 65, the U.S. followed immediately. And I, I think there is a challenge if we go to 67 without, um, without the international standard, uh, you're going to have a couple of things happen. One, older pilots bumping younger pilots. Um, you're going to have problems with probably the collective bargaining agreements between unions and airlines and what that's going to mean for, for bumping rights. And third, um, I do think the, the international standard is going to limit the ability of uh, pilots who are older than the international standard from, from flying internationally. That's the only information I've received. So I'm not sure we're solving a problem with, by raising that. I do think it's worth a debate. And it's worth a debate on the floor of the House, and I would agree with the ranking member McGovern if there's a way to get a, a bill or a, an amendment on the floor to have a, a, a fulsome debate on that as well. Um, I personally be for it. I'm going to talk that through with the, with the chairman. I personally be for it. But again, um, it, there's, there's a lot of ways to get the pilot issue, and we're doing that in the bill. So, I mean, I'll offer a few thoughts here just because uh, I was an original sponsor of, you know, Mr. Nell's bill that was then added into the to the uh, bill that came through committee you know I, i've got lots of reports back in the office and everything but even just casually looking at just you pull up pilot shortage just article after article after article you know story after story after story the only negative story that's come up on it about questioning whether there's a shortage is from the pilots union or the pilots association 
Uh, every, every other one, CNN, Fox, you know, every one of these just story after story, Forbes, the pilot shortage is playing havoc with air travel, pilot shortage for 2023, Southwest CEO believes pilot shortage will last for three years, goes through, talks about having 200 flights a day, 40 aircraft grounded, Americans, same thing, number of flights grounded, uh, reducing the, you know, uh, number of flights available for American passengers, obviously uh, making it more difficult for them to travel. Um, and so forth. Obviously, the legislation would say that pilots uh, over 65 would have to undergo the same medical exams every six months, EKG, same, all the same stuff would apply. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the fact is, I mean, globally, I, I get the point uh, with respect to the, um, you know, what happens and the impact on, on some of the complications. If you're going to increase it in the United States, you've got some uh, inability to fly uh, globally, but there are a you know significant number of countries that have adopted a higher age standard, as y'all know. Um, you know, I don't have in front of me Australia, like Japan, fairly notably up to 68 and so forth. I also note that the Airline Pilots Association opposed the age increase from 60 to 65 back in 2007, uh, and then suddenly kind of got a little religion once the pilots all said they wanted to do it. Um, it just strikes me that this is a, a, a common sense solution to free it up. And like, I'll just posit, you know, I'm not a pilot. There are some greater experts in this room than I who are pilots. I am a passenger, uh, which means I'm putting my life and my, my son's life, my family's life in the hands of a pilot. And so, uh, you know, safety's not, not lost on me. But when you've got two pilots sitting up there, both of whom have had to go through the same standards, physical tests, the EKG tests, all the health stuff, I mean, if, I, if you're asking me to choose between the pilot with 30 years of experience who's sitting there in the cockpit who's 66 and the 30-year-old who just went through a fast-track training program, I'm going to take the 66-year-old pilot. So I'm just saying, I'm not, uh, that's just my two cents. That's where I come down on this and the belief of being able to sort of uh, expand this in a way that matches international standards that have now been proven in Japan, Australia. You know, I think there's nine countries. And uh, I think we ought to be leading on that. Um, this isn't a partisan issue. It's not an ideological issue. I'm just conveying my belief and why I share the view of those who adopted the amendment committee. And I hope we will move forward with it. And with that, I will yield back to the chair. Thank you very much, if gentlelady I, Mr. from Indiana. Oh, yeah. oh, gentlemen. I, 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 no, I just I want to know. There's nothing in this bill that um, either implies or authorizes any fast track pilot training program. <laughs> I want. I just want to be clear about. Well, I, I agree with that, and I didn't mean that to sound pejorative. I'm just okay. saying. When you read and start on the, in terms of what we're trying to do to train up pilots, I'm just saying, okay, non-fast track. But I'm just saying, give me the give me the 66 year old who's been flying for 30 years who was a Marine pilot, and you know, anyway, and right, I, I yield you. back. Thank you. Right, gentle lady from Indiana is recognized for any questions she may have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank the witnesses, um, particularly Chairman Graves and the ranking member, for your work on this important bill. 